Hey there guys, welcome to Yosakuro. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create some very quick healing effects in Nuke and also how to go about doing marker removals. Now, quick note, I've already covered basics of projection texturing and tracking in the previous tutorial, so if you have any doubts or if you get stuck, you might want to go through those beforehand. So now, let's go ahead and get started with healing in Nuke. Okay guys, so here now I'm with a nuke and I've gone ahead and created the entire composite already. I'll just go ahead and walk you through the different steps I've used and exactly what's going on and why I have used those methods. Now, the first thing I've done is gone ahead and created this uh, scar healing dissolve node here, which basically goes ahead and gives you this entire healing effect. So let's go ahead first understand exactly how this dissolve node works and then you'll better understand exactly what's going on here. So I'll just go ahead shift over to this other composite I have here. So what I've done here is I've just created a dissolve node and connected these different uh, elements, these different inputs all into the different inputs of the dissolve node. So as you can see the inputs go from 0 to 4 and each one is connected to a different element here. Now in the dissolve node uh, properties itself I just extended this you can see as the number of uh, elements you connect increases the value of the slider increases too. Now all I have to do is go ahead, increase the value on the slider and it immediately goes ahead, switches to the value or whatever uh, number you have, it goes ahead, switches to that input. Now if I just go ahead, select this dissolve node, you can see because I have 2.56 input, you can see that the uh, 2 and the 3 input are being connected right now. I can go ahead, just go ahead, shift through whichever input I want and I get that particular result. So it's pretty useful for me to go ahead and use this for healing effect. So let's go ahead, shift over. So here what I've done is in Photoshop I created this simple scar and um, I've gone ahead just googled for Creative Commons images, I just downloaded some particular scar I really liked and uh, I've gone ahead taken this scar and I liquefied it to create a next version of it which looks a little bit more healed and a few more several revisions of the same version. Now using the dissolve node now what I've basically done is animated it so that it changes from the scarred one with the blood to the healed one which just leaves a final remaining scar on the skin. Now there's a very simple method which I've used. Now the best thing about dissolve is that it merges all of your channels together uh, or basically it just leaves all of your channels intact. So let's say the scar 1 had an alpha channel coming in and scar 2 did not. As long as scar 1 has an alpha channel only that one will show you the alpha in formation. As soon as SCAR2 comes all the alpha is lost. So now in the dissolve node if you see the alpha channel the alpha channel also has that animation applied because as the images change the alpha channel changes too. So I have this dissolve node which is basically doing all of my animations for me. Uh, the main thing to note here is that I wanted the texture to be animated. I wanted it to change over time and it's much easier to do this in Photoshop so I decided I was going to go ahead and create four different versions of this image in Photoshop and I put them here. Now the different design decisions you can take is go ahead use uh, grid warp or spline warp right here with the nuke, animate it and try to get the same results which you can most definitely get it and therefore uh, you don't have to make use of this dissolve node at all. Now one thing to note here is because these are images uh, individual frames basically and Nuke is not actually interpolating between these it's just going ahead and fading between one to another if there is not enough information between these images you will really see it's going to give a bad result it look like there is a sudden jerky uh, change from one frame to another so you might need to create a lot of different frames to go from one uh, section to another Okay, so that's basically the animated scarf. That's how I'm creating it. Now, the way I'm actually applying it over to the head itself is by the way of a mesh. So if I go ahead to the scene, the 3D scene, you can see I have this 3D mesh I have created. Now, this particular tracking, it was done in PF track, making use of uh, user tracks. So I was able to go ahead and track every single frame. I, I'm sorry, every single tracking marker I had created on the, I put on the character's head. So I was going, able to go ahead, track them and actually model the head itself within PF track and export that into Nuke. 
now whatever method I'm using or uh, I'm showing right now it will work even with uh, the tracking method I use in generating the point cloud and generating the mesh so all this stays the same it does not change only thing you'll be doing is projecting the texture rather than applying it to the UV maps now because it is in the UV map that's the reason you would see that I have this texture placed here at the top corner I can't really optimize it because UVs would have to be changed and I again have to go into Photoshop or Maya to change the UV maps and that just takes time so therefore I just gone ahead and put them right here so uh, now I have the animated texture all I wanted was to go ahead get in some more detail from the skin and uh, just get a little bit more of skin detail on the sides so it looks more realistic so I've gone ahead uh, within Photoshop again I've gone ahead and created this simple texture using a simple brush I just uh, splattered in some white uh, on this so this is the mat I'm making use of and I've gone ahead cut out the face uh, this is nothing but um, texture render view from PF track you don't have to know about it all I've done is use that to create a mat and apply the scar tissue along with the mat uh, so this works even without any of the PF track data now once this is applied to my face itself all I have to do is go ahead and render this out so with my scanline renderer I've gone ahead and rendered this result and if I disconnect the BG you can see this is the result I have now this is literally the entire healing effect which I have so there is nothing special happening here this is all you need to create, go ahead and create the heal now once that we have the heal itself the next thing is I have my footage but it has a lot of these tracking markers I want to go ahead and get rid of these tracking markers so basically marker removal now uh, the easiest way to go ahead and do this is using roto paint and blur so let me go ahead and show you how it works I'll go ahead and simply create a simple roto node so pressing O on your keyboard gives you the roto node I'll connect that into this footage I'll zoom into one of these markers which is present I'll just go ahead just drag in a simple roto around it so I have this if I go ahead switch it over to the matte overlay you can see that there is an alpha channel which has been created in that position or you can just switch over to the alpha channel itself now I have the roto node connected there what I can do now is go ahead and just simply blur it so B for blur the shortcut I've gone ahead added in a blur node I'll just go ahead blur it and as you can see it just goes off but right now it's blurring out the entire image I don't want to blur the entire image I only want to blur out this alpha so I'll go ahead mask RGBA alpha so only the alpha region gets masked so you can see by blurring it out I literally get rid of the marker itself so what you could do is go ahead track all these different markers every frame and try to get an alpha mat for each one of them now that is a good method you can go ahead definitely try to do it but it's kind of laborious and it takes a lot of time anyway you've already gone ahead and tracked these for the three, 3d tracking for 3d solving so what I have done is gone ahead and made use of this to go ahead and get all these spears in place of the actual markers itself so I have all these spear points which basically is nothing but what PF track gave me or you can go ahead and make use of nuke itself to get this done and I'm going ahead and rendering this out to get these white points for every single marker that I have now once I have all of these points all I'm going to do is go ahead and blur them first so that it gives me a bit more softened edge so that they're not very hard I've gone ahead graded them so it gives me a perfect one in the center and it fades off to zero as it goes off now what I actually had to do for blurring here is put in a roto node with alpha so basically what I now want is my alpha channel or all the markers to be in the alpha channel of my actual footage itself now the footage or whatever grading I have done here all of that alpha information is actually in the RGBA values if I come to alpha itself you can see it has a completely random value which is coming in from scanline renderer which I don't care about so I want one of the RGB informations to go into my alpha channel so for that I've used shuffle copy I've gone ahead set the red value to go into the alpha from the channel 1 and the channel 2 is giving me all the RGBA information so from here uh, the channel 1 is giving me alpha channel 2 is giving me RGBA so once this is done if I come back to the shuffle copy pressing the A key on the keyboard gives me alpha channel you can see it's only the markers and the entire uh, footage is there in the RGB once this is done first thing you'll have to note is if I directly go ahead and start blurring this you will observe at the edges 
that I get this kind of an artifact which is nothing but the alpha channel being blurred at that section. So I don't really want this because it literally destroys what I'm trying to create. It goes ahead and destroys the edges. So I want to go ahead remove the alpha channel from these edges uh, because of the spear which I've created. The spears are completely spherical and uh, I want to get rid of them. So to get rid of them I've gone ahead and created a simple keyer. Uh, it's just a simple green keyer which I've used and I've gone ahead and keyed it to get this result. So what I've done is go make sure I'm only getting the face portion of the entire character. Now once I have this I've gone ahead and eroded the alpha a little bit so that it goes in through the edge so that all the edges are removed from there. So you can see there is a slight feathering also which I've applied. So this erode alpha has a little bit of blur applied so that the edges are not very sharp and there is a fade off between the markers which are present here and as I go towards the edge. Once this is done, if I come here to my merge, which is nothing but a simple merge for only the alpha channel, I'm not merging any color values here. If I enable it, you can see all the alphas at the edges get removed. So I'm only affecting the alpha at the edges, so I'm not going to get any artifacts using this. Now once I have this, I've gone ahead and blurred the image. So as you can see, at the edges, nothing is lost. With the help of this, I've literally gone ahead and eradicated a lot of the issues. Now, if I go ahead and disable this blur, you can see all the markers are visible. If I enable it, all the markers are gone. Now, the problem is, while we are blurring, uh, not only this, for any image uh, usually, what happens is that the marker was actually black in color. So that black color gets mixed around with the skin itself. So it actually creates a bit more darker tone that you actually, than you actually want. So gone ahead, apply the color correct. And this color correct is basically going to apply a little bit of gain to the exact sections which have the same alpha. So a very little amount of gain to just add a bit of this brightness so you don't have those uh, dark spots anymore. It's a very subtle change but depends on the quality you're going for and it doesn't really take a lot of time to get it done. So as you can see the entire footage has markers removed. Obviously there are certain markers here which are not removed because in the green key here they were not actually removed there itself. So obviously you can go ahead add in a little bit of masks there to get uh, rid of those too. Uh, I don't really care about them so I left them right there. Now once this is done I can go ahead connect that as my BG for my scanline uh, renderer which I have here for 3D and you can see my mesh sits on top of the head and gives me this beautiful result. So I have the scar which is healing as the head rotates. So I have this beautiful result. I'll go ahead set this to proxy and just hit render, uh, just hit play once so you can see exactly what's happening. So I have the entire scar, it starts healing at the ninth frame, it goes ahead throughout and then in the end you have actually just the scar itself let, uh, left out and you can see the skin is partially left out so it's partially healed at the end. So once this is done, I've gone ahead and applied a grade node trying to give it a different look. Obviously I'm not the best guy to do any kind of grading so I've gone and added in a lot of values. You have a lot of options. You can go through the help documentations to see exactly what this does. Once this is done I've just gone ahead and added a little bit of effect and I've gone ahead and written it out. So basically that's this entire composite. So uh, I really hope you guys understood this. I'll go ahead and briefly summarize exactly what I've done and finish up this video. Now to summarize exactly what I did to get to the fun complete result, uh, not uh, leaving any other steps. The first thing I obtained was the actual footage itself. I had to go ahead and track this footage. So this tracking was done within PF Track. I used only user tracks, no auto tracks. I tracked each and every marker on his face. So I was able to get a pretty good track because I already had all the camera details. Once I tracked, I exported it into Nuke and this basically give me a scene, uh, gives me a scene with the actual head mesh itself and the camera which is animated and it moves around the head. So if you want to project something, you can also make use of the camera. Uh, next, it also gives me all the user tracks as uh, 3D po point positions. So all of those details are still maintained. So you can see all these tracking markers have come in. Now, what I actually want is a 3D object which I have. This 3D object to give me the proper texture I want in the right place because I already have a mesh which is perfectly fitting into the head itself. I don't have to worry about creating point clouds or generating mesh or any of those things. So I just went ahead, took this mesh which already has UV mapping on it. I use a UV mapping 
uh, and basically if you want to go ahead see exactly how to get the UV maps you only have to go ahead use a scanline renderer connect the object which you have and in the scanline renderer option just use projection mode as UV and here you should be able to see exactly what kind of UVs you have you got the alpha channel and if you have alpha actually connected you should be able to see the object itself so the, that's one way of checking UVs if you don't have a 3D program ready now once I had the mesh I had to apply textures on top of it I knew that I wanted to create an animated texture and I wanted to use Photoshop to generate them and I wanted to use dissolve to merge between these textures so I just went ahead on Google search for a good image which I could I went ahead dissolve them together so I actually got the texture animated now once it's animated uh, the problem is uh, it might not look very neat when it's just combined it looks looks like as if it's just copy pasted on top so what I actually wanted a certain amount of details right next to the texture itself which actually uh, merges the whole thing together so that is exactly what I'm trying to do here at the bottom so if you see here I only have the head texture which is projected on top of the mesh and I've gone ahead and tried to color correct it and try to get a little bit of more detail about the skin right around the scar tissue itself so this entire section can be completely skipped you don't really need to do any of this this is just an additional detail just to get a little bit more quality now once all this is done I actually was able to obtain a texture render but this texture render literally looks something like this so it had all of these tracking markers still left out so I had to remove the tracking markers so because PF track had already given me all of these tracking marker data I went ahead used this and uh, just put them into the alpha channel and blurred them out completely so I basically got rid of them and mainly because it um, creates these artifacts here are the edges I wanted to get rid of these artifacts so I used a little bit of keying technique here on the side so I got rid of those artifacts I color corrected it a little bit just to uh, enhance the colors everywhere the markers were removed and I used that as a background so it gives me this result and now I applied a simple grade to get some colors I applied this other additional vignetting effect and I finally write it out so pretty much the entire composite is done and as you can see I did do a couple of tests here and obviously you can delete them once your composite is done uh, so uh, that's pretty much it that's exactly how I went about creating the whole animated texture healing effect and removing the markers I hope you guys have found this tutorial useful I know I was a bit too fast uh, with this tutorial because I wanted to keep it short uh, any feedback you have on uh, how I could improve this tutorials will be really helpful and obviously if you have any doubts put them in the comments section I'll definitely get back to you and if you have any other people who are interested in animation please share this tutorial with them help these people out uh, everything which I'm putting out uh, there is for free so hopefully this helps people out and also if you want to support me uh, uh, check out the description to see exactly how we could go about doing that so that's it for this video guys I really hope you find this useful I'll see you next week with the next one so see ya